I do actually really want to watch this. Investigating Logan Paul's biggest scam. Okay, here we go. Here we fucking go. Cryptozoo.co. I am so excited about this project. It's 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 so fun. It's a really fun game that makes you money. A fun game that earns you money. How much did you guys make from Cryptozoo? I lost around fifty thousand dollars in Cryptozoo. I lost forty thousand dollars. I lost around fifteen thousand US dollars. I lost twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, but like uh, Coffeezilla doesn't show the one guy that won like a million dollars though. So like I don't know, guys. I think this is just. Uh, bro, this, he's got a bias. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's got a bias. I, I've got to tell you, though, like, if you put your money into something that the most popular thing that Logan Paul has ever done is film dead people in a forest, if you go and put $40,000 of your money into something that he's promoting, at a certain point, buyer beware. $120,000. $500,000 Australian, which is half a million in crypto zoo. Shut up! No, you haven't! Yeah, 500k. Oh, no. Today, we're investigating Logan Paul's Crypto Zoo, a blockchain game that made millions but wow. never worked. Some of you guys think you know Wait, how, what was the thing? A blockchain game. Logan Paul's Crypto Zoo price surges more than 5,000. Oh, wow! Game that made millions but never worked. Some of you guys think you know the story, but it goes so much deeper. I've uncovered sociopaths, billionaires, fake orphans. Did I mention fake orphans? And of course, at the center of it, we have Logan Paul himself who has abandoned this thing, leaving thousands of fake orphans in his wake. Wait a second. Thousands of real, victims in his orphans. wake. Now, you'll be hearing from some of those people because their stories are heartbreaking. This is the first in a three-part series that's been a- Oh, oh my god. A three-part series? Holy shit, what is this, Lord of the Rings? God damn. Year in the making. And if you like high effort investigations like this one, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon. I don't take sponsors. We are viewer supported. So if you want to and are able to, thank you. Either way, make a t-shirt or like a beanie or something and I'll buy it and I'll, I'll wear it. Like, that would be really cool. Enjoy the video. Yeah, just like something small. For the last six months, I've been working on my own NFT project. Make an NFT. <laughs> we have yeah. a massive team behind it and are probably out of pocket like a million just because we believe it's going to work. Wow. September 1st, wow. CryptoZoo.co. We okay. don't scam. That's I've fine. never scammed anyone before. Damn, bro. Okay. I feel like any time that whenever you're trying to sell something, bro, we don't. All right, listen. I know what you're thinking that it's a scam. Bro, it's not a scam. Like in your opening fucking sales pitch, telling people that it's not a scam is the worst idea you can ever have. Logan mm -hmm. cares extremely deeply about his audience, loves I his audience, loves his brand, doesn't have to f scam to make money. Mm -hmm. Welcome to part one, the million dollar mystery that began this whole story. Yes. Like many people, I first heard about CryptoZoo from a podcast Logan runs called Impulsive, which was the experience of a lot of people that I spoke to. So I first heard about it on the Logan Paul podcast. Impulsive, I think. It was off the, one of the impulsive episodes. The thing that I'm most excited for, and this is the first time I've ever said it's anything like, about so this. It's like last year. For the last six months, I've been working on my own NFT project. Wow. I think there, ne I think there needs to be a fresh take, and this project that I have uh, is that fresh take. Damn, bro. Like, that's true. That's true, because, like, all the other NFTs were scams. But this one is going to be different. Yeah, it's going to be totally fucking different, guys. Like, it's not going to be the same as it was before. It's going to be different. Now, look, at first, I was just as surprised at this pitch as anyone else because I just got finished roasting Logan for a different coin called Dink Doink, which is fans love. <laughs> I love how it's like... I was amazed by this because I just got done reporting on one of his other scams, and now he's doing another scam after that. Yeah, Dink Doink. Yeah, of course. 
lost money on. I'm a big dog fan. Dumbest I've ever seen, and that's why I'm all in. It's comedic, it's fun, it's comedy. Now look, I know Logan and his friends tried to make it look like Dink Doink was all about the memes, but it turns out they secretly were tied to the project, and Logan created the Dink Doink character himself, and subsequently abandoned that project. So if you invested in it, you got blasted. And Logan rightfully took a lot of heat for Dink Doink, which is why I was surprised when he seemingly immediately jumped into another crypto project. But well, why do you think that is? So Logan Paul had this crypto thing that he was doing, and it was really badly received. Everybody thought it was a scam. But now he wants to do another one right after that. The only reason is because the first one made a lot of money. No fucking shit. That's obviously what happened. Is he went and he did it and it made a lot of money. So he's like, fuck, let's do this again. This is great. Logan insisted CryptoZoo, it was different. It wasn't his friend's project this time. It was his. Yeah. And it wasn't even a project at all. It was a game that could earn you money. I'm, I'm excited to launch uh, to launch my game. You keep using a, and you just did it again. You keep using a word there, game. You're not using like a project. It's a game. It's a game. It's a fun, it's a really fun game well, that makes you money. Well, let's see it. Can now we see the game? You might be wondering, how's it possible to earn money from a game? Well, I, well I'm not. Me I mean, like, fuck, everybody makes money selling fucking video game gold. Let's see what the game is to break it down for you this is how it was supposed to work and you've got to think you've got to keep in mind it, logan paul used to play wow he played a gnome mage so this guy i, I mean like he knows how it is yeah really yeah you started yeah, by yeah. buying this crypto token called zoo which is their in-game currency and you use zoo coins to then buy egg nfts which you can then hatch to become okay. animals you then can breed those two animals to become hybrid animals. For example, if you breed a gorilla and a kitten, you get a gore kitty. And the more rare the NFT, the higher the daily yield of zoo tokens that animal earns you every day. Theoretically, it works like almost like passive income. You can then burn your animal NFTs to release the zoo they earned back to you. And from there, you can invest it into eggs or just cash out. Now, some of you of the Egyptian persuasion might notice some triangular qualities Oh, fuck. Oh, God, they did it again. Oh, shit! Guys, come on! Did we get fooled again? To this game description. But let's not wow. be too quick to judge, because remember, there are a lot of NFT games built on this model. It's called Play to Earn. Now, Logan yes. admits that there are other games like his, but... What's going to really make his stand out is that other games have randomly generated assets. His game has handmade art. They're, it's quick to make a digital asset with, you know, unique randomly generated characteristics. Uh, okay. We handmade art for the past six months, bro. Approval, very specific notes, 10 different artists making art for our project. Now, I'll admit, this all sounds very enticing. Okay, that's cool. Sure handmade art a fun game that can earn you money and one of the biggest influencers in the world backing it you yep. might think how can i lose which is why when people were told all you I had lose? to do to play was buy an egg people spent millions just on the first launch between eth and zoo people bought 2.5 million dollars who the fuck who the fuck buys an egg you don't even know what's in the egg and it's not even a real egg Like, it's not even an egg. Like, I. Dollars worth of eggs in the first day. How much? And did spent millions. Just on the first launch between ETH and Zoo, people bought $2.5 million worth of eggs in the first day. <laughs> and did I mention the game hadn't even been launched yet? All people were buying was the marketing and the promises. And it wasn't just Absolutely. the NFTs they bought either. The Zoo token also skyrocketed in value, reaching a $2 billion market cap. Bro, a $2 billion market cap for this bullshit. I don't even know what to say about this.
Yeah, it, it's like, how do you let this happen to you? Pre-game launch, right? The trading volume was in the tens of millions of dollars per day. Oh yeah, no which doubt. Which kind of is like Fortnite not coming out, but people trading tens of millions of dollars in V-Bucks every day. That's what this was like. And I know it sounds stupid to buy an influencer project, but you have to understand people saw Logan as different. Oh. <laughs> of the people that I would consider different, Logan Paul would not be one of them. I mean, I, I don't even have a very negative opinion of Logan Paul. I think he's all right. But I mean, like, the guy's not a saint. He's not like some fucking, like, he's, isn't this not Gandhi? How do you do this? It was Logan Paul at the end of the day. An internet personality that I actually trusted, that I actually kind of believed in. Obviously, when... I mean, like, at a certain point, man, like, that's stupid. Like, I, I feel bad for these guys because it's like, yeah, obviously, Logan Paul's a scumbag for doing this. Like, definitely, he's a scumbag. I think we can just kind of, like, rule that one out because, like, we all know that. But, like, you, you got to, like, come on, man. Like, you got to, what the, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like, what the hell? How are you going to believe this shit? All of you chasing American Dream, that's what I said, man. It's easy to fool people. It's... Someone so influential releases something, everyone wants to be a part of it. I still believe in this false fantasy that everyone else started believing that Logan Paul's a changed man. I thought it was a safe place. Well, I, I mean, I'd be fine to admit Logan Paul's a changed man too, but that doesn't mean I'm going to buy his NFT project. Like, damn. Like, and, and like, you could see this guy, obviously, you've got to keep in mind, people that get so fixated around collecting bullshit that they think is going to be worth a lot of money in the future, like, it's just, it's just fucking dumb. The reason why things are usually worth a lot of money, like, this is one thing that I've learned over time, is that a lot of the, the things that are actually extremely rare and valuable, the reason why they're rare and valuable is because there was either some sort of difficulty with mass producing a lot of them or that they were not intended to be rare or valuable whenever they were created. They were just made and then they were stopped they, they stopped being made. So like you, almost everything that's like made intentionally to be like a collector's item something like this like these NFT things, they're not going to have any value because the value is entirely fucking fake. Like the scarcity is completely made up just to make the value. Being a, a guy like that, you identify like Logan Paul being Just the head of the. I, I, my dad's calling me. Okay, sorry about that. That was calling to see if... Yeah, I'm going to have dinner with him tomorrow. So uh, we're just calling to verify that. Project. They had seen this story he had been telling everyone that uh, he was this reformed influencer, right? That he was no longer a reckless clout goblin just in it for the money. And but I and to be fair, I actually kind of bought into this as well. Because, like, I, I mean, you've got to keep in mind, like, I bought into this as in, like, I've read three things about Logan Paul in the last three years, and it's like, ah, it seems like he's not as much of a dick. Like, it's not like I was going to invest in anything he did. It just seems like, ah, it's not as bad as it was. Yeah, why? Well, because, I mean, it just seemed that way from what I read. I, I mean, I, I, it's not like this was an actionable opinion I had. I was just like, ah, it seems like he's not as bad. They thought this time it's different. Logan Paul couldn't possibly scam us. No. Right? But as the game got closer to release, the CryptoZoo team started releasing the first ever photos of these animals. Oh my and Come God. to find out this handmade art story wasn't really true. It was actually Adobe stock photos mashed together. This was the sort of- I see. Oh, wow. So they took it and then they put an elephant trunk on his nose. 
Oh, bro. And then the ears. Oh, that's a good one. First red flag Damn. of this project. And I made a video about it at the time, um, but it was kind of surface level and something <laughs> didn't add up beneath the surface. Something where I just couldn't shut it's this perfect. case down in my head. It was actually part of the announcement video that they, something they said. See if you can spot it. We have a massive team behind it and are probably out of pocket like a million just because we believe it's going to work. On development. Yeah. I got to say, if it took you a million dollars to pay somebody to Photoshop an elephant dick onto a panda's nose, I think that Logan Paul is actually getting scammed himself as well. That's the line that started this whole mystery. We spent a million dollars on development. I couldn't get this out of my head. You know, is he lying? There's no way he expects people to believe he spent it on art. So wait, maybe he spent it on blockchain stuff, right? That's what I thought. Yeah, but yeah. then I audited the smart contract and it's not handmade at all. It's not even original. It's what's called a fork, a copy of, you know, some other code that exists out there. One of them is called Floki Shib X, which launched before it. So where'd this million dollars go? I, I didn't understand. And Logan just kept repeating this claim. We put hundreds of thousands of dollars in it. Uh, personally, the whole team, a million plus. Now, at the time I'm looking into this, there's a team. Well, I mean, why why would they say that? They'd say that they put a million dollars into it because it sounds good. Because if it, if it sounds like they put a lot of money into it, people are going to be more likely to put their money into it because they're thinking, well, he wouldn't scam us if he's investing his own money into it. That's why. I mean, like, why are we overthinking this? They're going around for hatch day which is the day you can hatch your egg oh, NFTs. Fuck. And it kind of symbolized the true launch of crypto. So I thought maybe this is it. Maybe this is where they spent all the money on their game. Even their community manager, Ben Roth, promised people after hatch day, things will take a turn for the 180. Well, they kind of did, right? So I put Ben Roth on the board too. I needed to know all the characters in crypto zoo uh -huh. and i waited and finally on november 3rd 2021 bin roth turned out to be right things did take a turn on hatch day only for the worse let's meet one of the victims helicopter bob to explain more my name is rob helicopter bob lost just under seven thousand dollars with crypto zoo and the first thing i asked bob was about his animals if he was making money with crypto zoo how much he made and if the passive yield What's so crazy to me about this is like these guys are like, these are 28, 34 year old men. This isn't some fucking like some 18 year old. Oh, I've been watching Logan Paul since I was in fifth grade. He never gonna do nothing bad to me. Hey, would, they would never do that. I thought it was funny because they had a, oh, I want to have a koala. But yeah, it, it's like I wouldn't hold it against him. He's just a fucking idiot, right? But like, these are grown ass men. Worked. What are you doing? Oh, it never did from the beginning. There, it wasn't even written into the contract where it showed that you could, that you were actually yielding Zoo, but there was nothing that was actually, you know, backing that up. There was no way to claim your yield. There never was. Wait, 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 wait. play that again. Did you hear that? There was no way to claim your yield. There never was. Hold on. The core mechanic of CryptoZoo that you can make money with these stupid animals didn't even work on launch day. And still, to this day, a year later, still does not work, is what the invest. Well, I mean, because if they could take their money out, then it could crash the coin. And Logan Paul already had one coin get crashed whenever everybody tried to take their money out of it and sell it. So the solution on the second time around is just don't let people sell it. And that way it won't go down in price solution that there it is it's not that's the solution investors are saying which this is just crazy people spent millions of dollars on these eggs but it even gets worse because i kept talking to people and i discovered something because remember i told you you could buy eggs with those zoo coins well apparently they also made it so you could buy them with ethereum and okay. on the day of selling about half of these purchases took place with ethereum only it turns out for the people who spent eth 
not only did the yield part of it not work, did the NFTs not pay you, you also couldn't even hatch them. So I acquired a bunch of eggs and, and I actually want to play. The eggs weren't fertilized. Bro. How did he forget about that? Man, Logan Paul fucked this. He can't hatch the eggs. Oh my God. <laughs> I think this shit's so funny. The game. I didn't acquire the eggs with the intent of keeping them. I actually wanted to hatch them and see what I got out of them and, and play in this ecosystem. That's yeah, that's why it's a bunch of dumb fucks like this guy who think that they're smart by investing into a crypto scam or an NFT scam by a guy who is most famous for videotaping dead people in a forest. How fucking stupid do you have to be? What do you think? You're going to make money off of this? You think you're going to come out ahead here? Oh my god. It's How sad. Or whatever, right? And then I can't do anything. It's not showing up on the website when I connect my wallet, etc, etc. So I'm a little baffled. I'm like, is, I must be doing something wrong. So I open up I open up a support ticket. I open up a support ticket with Crypto Zoom. Ben Roth is actually the person answering my support ticket. Oh yeah, no, no, it's 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 down for the moment, but we're working on it. Let me tell you, it's 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 never been it's never been up. <laughs> it's never been... <laughs> Yeah, it's we we're, we're working on it, man. It, it's gonna get worked on, it will be ready at some point. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be taken care of, don't worry about it. Wait, you can't even hatch? No, it's, I'm telling you, it's just a picture. There's nothing I could do with it. You're kidding, you can't hatch? There's nothing I could do with it. Uh, you, could ask, you could ask any of those community guys. Uh, it's basically worth nothing whatsoever. Wow, so. <laughs> he can't even hatch his little egg, it's so sad. <laughs> it's actually so sad, man. <laughs> yeah. Crypto Zoo mods tell me cross chain hatching at one point worked, but was so bucky it was shut down. The chickens came out cross eyed. We gotta shut the bitch down again. Sorry. We can't have none of this shit. On launch day, basically <laughs> nothing worked, and a year later, that's. They made $2.5 million on this in one day. Still true. Now, after this was discovered, the price of Zoo fell 63% in just 24 hours. Who could have expected that? at this that? point, Logan Paul basically goes silent on CryptoZoo. That's no smart. more podcast mentions. No more saying he handmade art. Yeah. CryptoZoo already got millions in investments, but Logan only speaks in the Discord twice over the next year to say, quote, sober, currently shaking my head, and yo. yo. That was his contribution to this project. Yeah, that's about right. I would have expected that for sure. Meanwhile, his community manager, Ben Roth, was actively claiming that Logan was going to be marketing CryptoZoo any day now. Yeah. He told people things like, Logan is an uncontrollable marketing guru. It's over when we launch. And when we have a product to market, it'll get marketed. And marketing will crush. I promise you. And, and you know what's so fucking sad about this? It's not about the fact that he typed this. It's about 20 fucking morons that had the, the the audacity to put the rocket emoji as a response to it on Discord. Those are, See, like, Ben is making money off of this. So it's like, ah, Ben's just being a scumbag. But 20 people, without getting paid, put rocket emojis on this. And this disconnect between Logan abandoning the project and his team on CryptoZoo saying that he hadn't, saying that it was going to be any day now, mm -hmm. left investors feeling like they were being led on. All you had to do was go on and tell us, look, there's something going on with this project. I'm, I'm abandoning it or whatever before people got more and more trapped and promising and promising, yeah, this is going to be great. But when it came to actually doing anything, he, he just hid away from it. Yeah, Have some decency to come out, talk to the people that invested initially, that invested along the way on all of the fake and false promises, on all of the false hype, and be honest with people. 
Because surely Logan Paul. What the fuck are you talking about? Th see, these are the people, like, this is how dumb they are. What do you think he's going to come out and say? Oh, yeah, guys, it was all a scam. Uh, it, it, we didn't, uh, we didn't, uh, the eggs weren't going to work from the beginning. We knew they weren't going to work. We just went live with it anyway to make money. Wait, what do you think they're going to do? They're not going to say that. Like, th and, and this is the mind of a person who puts their money into this. Is that they're so naive that they think that Logan Paul is just going to come out and tell everybody that it was a scam. I, how are they just talking? Yeah, because they, well, they, they're naive. Paul, who's got this billion dollar hydration company and, and the WWE star, is got enough money. It doesn't need to, to rug us lot. And it's because of these false promises. And this is like, again, these are how naive these people are. They think that bec he has enough money. He doesn't need more money. Then why do people that are billionaires become multi-billionaires? How can you be so dumb? About marketing, that these poor investors believed in CryptoZoo so long they sat and watched every Logan Paul episode, trying to guess and decipher when this so-called marketing push would happen. And Logan and his it's team really right fed now. into this with a lot of cryptic messages. Only a month after CryptoZoo's launch, uh, actually, the hatch day, they started teasing this. Not too much of this is out, but he, he's been working on a massive project. And the one, one of them will be the biggest thing I ever do. It'll be the, it's like my, my life and soul is wow. put into this project. Is where, which is where most of my time these days goes. The biggest thing wow. I've ever Surely done. this secret project what that happened Logan the week put after? his soul into is CryptoZoo, right? Yeah. You know, the project he launched a month ago? Yeah. Well, his fans certainly thought so. Right. I'm like, holy cow, it makes so much sense. Yeah. He's talking about CryptoZoo. Ben and the dudes are like like putting smiley faces and, and egging the rest of the community. Like, this is it, guys. You know, this is what we've been working towards. I mean, this is it. This this, this It's finally happening. Logan's going to market the project. And they kept saying that. Logan's going to market the project and it's going to change everything. So now... I wonder if these people are ever... They ever put any thought into... Why would Logan Paul marketing the project make you money other than hype? Like you ever like you ever wonder if they actually think about this for like more than two seconds? Imagine their surprise when another clip surfaces of Logan finally admitting this secret project isn't CryptoZoo at all. It's something else entirely. I'll tell you about this project when uh, we get closer to launch. Yeah, yeah. This project line is going. Is, to... is that the thing with the egg? The, like the zoo? No, 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 no. Look at this one. This one. This one's egg. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Mike immediately comes in and is like, hey, yo, like, listen, let's move on. Yeah, yeah. This, is be, this is be the craziest we've ever done. Oh, man, can you imagine if you're one of these investors and Logan Paul's going pitching this new secret project and you're thinking it's yeah. CryptoZoo and someone's like, oh, is it, that, is it that thing with the eggs? And he's like, no, 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 definitely, definitely not. That was the last project. This is the real project yeah. that I'm working on. Thankfully, yeah, we already made money from this that slide one. because as he went around making the rounds on his new project called 99 Originals, people were like, hey, didn't you just abandon your last one? Yeah. And unsurprisingly, it's not his fault. It's the bad actors who ruined the project. Wait, what? I see people giving multiple explanations for why these haven't worked. And you know there's accusations out there. How does it make you feel when people are doing these takedown videos about your NFT projects previously? Uh, it's, it's sad because of what I just said. Mm. There's yeah, so sense. much going on behind the scenes. Like, Doug, I'm not the bad guy here. Yeah, yeah. There's some that is sad because of what I said. I mean, like, there's shit that you don't know about and I'm not the bad guy. So, I mean, like, fuck. Need I say more? I mean, come on. Actual is out there. Yeah. And I'm, it's not me. Like, I'm here to build. This is a space where a lot of people do see dollar signs like any yeah. burgeoning industry if there's money to be made there's going to be both good and bad people um there's a lot of shaped characters in the crypto space i'm learning all of it we had a an issue with um crypto zoo where our, our our lead developer uh took the code that he made fled to switzerland actually fled to switzerland and like held it hostage for a million dollars like behind That's the scenes the million drama that like like took took uh took a stick and stuck it in the spokes of my wheels oh well that wasn't expected. There's a shady developer who held up Logan's code hostage in Switzerland. That's 
why this hasn't worked the whole time. That's he held it hostage for a million dollars. Well, let's add that to the board. I mean, isn't the mystery solved? Now, obviously, the first thing yeah. I wanted to do was hunt down this developer who will be calling Z here and find out the truth of what happened. Why did he steal Logan's code for a million dollars? However, I finally got a hold of him. And when I did, he admitted he took the code hostage, but he says the reason for it was nothing like what Logan had said. He never, literally never paid me anything at all, ever. I never paid. And uh, you know, got to a point when I was working on it where I just realized they were just going to try to steal all of my work and not pay me. So I took all the good source code private. And I, I just kind of like spent like a month just trying to negotiate and um, get, get something figured out where I would finally get paid. Because like I'm on my end, I have a team of 30 engineers, so I'm earning fifty thousand dollars a week on building this building this thing. And um, the only thing they brought to the table were a bunch of Photoshop changes. So Zeke. <laughs> When you put it like that, it kind of makes sense. Claims he wasn't blackmailing anyone. Yep. He had to hire a team to develop this whole thing, and he just wanted to be paid for the work they did. According to him, they negotiated a $1 million payday for this whole project. Which could be And for the second I heard that, I thought, oh, that's interesting, because Logan claims he spent a million dollars on this whole thing. Right. This developer saying he's owed a million dollars on this project. Now, I didn't want to just take one person's word for it, so I later confirmed with another developer who worked for something called the Blockchain Center that he also hadn't been paid. Uh, we've been paid nothing. I would have loved to have Zoo, but I don't have any. So that's multiple sources working on the Crypto Zoo team project who were not paid. Now, obviously, these are big accusations, which is why I wanted to confront Logan Paul on them. But unfortunately, we're not exactly on speaking terms. Oh, bro, like, bro, like, what did coffee do wrong? Man, like Logan probably had a good reason for that. Would you start working on this without a signed agreement? That sounds wild to me. Here's the problem is that even if you have a signed agreement, a contract is only as strong as your lawyer is. So you have to go to court to enforce this. So do, do you want to go to court, invest hundreds of hours of your own time, hundreds of do hundreds of thousands of dollars and you've already lost a million dollars in money. Like so many times contracts get broken and nobody goes to, nobody gets sued over this. They're like, fuck you. We're not going to work with you anymore because it's just not financially. It doesn't make financial sense to sue them. So I wondered, how could I speak to Logan without speaking to Logan? And that's when I found out there was someone who might know just as much about this whole story. And I will explain everything one day with my manager, who's like in charge now. Logan Paul's manager, okay. a guy named Jeff Levin. He might be just what we need to settle this whole All thing. All right. So I gave He's him a gonna call. He's going to set things straight. Hello? Hey, Jeff. Hey, uh, sorry to bother you. This is Steven with CoffeeZilla. I'm calling because I've heard reports that CryptoZoo hasn't paid their development team, and I'm um, just reaching out for comment before I do this story. Um, I got your number from one of the development team, and uh, they just wanted to, I just want to follow up on that. Um, I have no comment for it. Okay, you're, are you guys denying it, or are you saying it's not true? There's no comment. I don't think that the information is true. Okay, because they're saying a million dollars hasn't been paid in development okay. for crypto zoo and logan paul said publicly that it has been paid yeah that's crazy um so i mean it's pretty serious accusation and obviously yeah i don't want to just run a story if you guys have a whole side to I know, your story here you, your job your job as a as a um uh -oh. as someone that is reporting news is to actually verify correct news right that's, that's why i'm calling you that's what he's doing I know, and that's legal grounds for that stuff. So I'm just telling yeah, you. Yeah, makes sense. Legally, yeah. you have to report correct news with verifiable information. Yeah, true. Right, that's why I'm calling you. They've given me a yeah, lot of I'm, things, a lot of evidence. Okay, well, okay. You can, you can have the evidence you want, but I'm just letting you know, if you report anything on us, I, I appreciate your business. I appreciate you as a person. 
and I'm just telling you, you know, from a legal standpoint, as we've been advised always, is if anybody reports fake news, that's where we won't, you know. Yeah, this call was a mess. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, for sure. Like, what a clown. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a threat. Well, what he's doing is he's being so vague. And I don't know if he's being vague to avoid, uh, to, to, to have some level of plausible deniability. Or he's being so vague because he just doesn't even know what the fuck he's talking about. I don't know. Jeff, Logan's manager, seems to be implying that I'm not allowed to repeat allegations his own development team made, mm -hmm. even though Logan can go on podcasts and publicly accuse those developers of stealing his code. Not only that, he's the one who refuses to provide any evidence, yeah. but seems to sort of be implying that maybe we'll sue you if you tell this to right. anyone. Right, yeah, exactly. Which he then denies doing when I ask him if that's what he's doing. Told you I have no comment to it. Telling you once again, from a legal standpoint, you have to report truth. If you do not verify truth, then you're just allegations, and those then will be handled the way that we want to handle them. Wait, so you're it's saying you're saying that. you refuse to no give comment. me proof that the no allegations comment. aren't true, but if I report on the I allegations, no you guys might sue. No. No. No, I did not say that. I did not say that. Uh, I said, I, I, again, I'm just I'm trying to read between no the comments. lines. Don't read between the lines. Okay. Listen to okay. the exact words that I'm saying. Okay. Listen to the exact words I'm saying. I'm listening. I have no comment on the situation. Okay. Your job legally is to report facts. If you don't report facts on the information you're given, it is illegal. Yes, that was a real conversation with a real person. Now, what I'm an idiot. What a dumbo. I'm no lawyer, but I don't think it's a crime to say that multiple developers say they haven't been paid and Logan's team refuses to provide any evidence or like statements or wire transfers that they have. Which, by the way, seems incredibly ironic given just how much Logan whines about not being paid by Floyd Mayweather. Well, Where's that that's different because it's where he gets money and not where somebody else gets money. So like that kind of makes sense, right? Because like there's, yeah, because the other guy in one situation, it was him giving somebody else money. So like, that's not really as important, but in the situation where it was somebody that could give him money, well then, yeah, of course that's important because he's going to get money. My money, bitch. Floyd never paid me for our fight. Who am I? The IRS? Nope. But you might be the crypto zoo dev team. Now, in all seriousness, I do want to acknowledge something which actually kind of looks bad a bit on the developers because it turns out very few written contracts were actually done. So much of this were verbal deals like, oh, we'll take care of you. We'll give you 350K. We'll give you a million. We'll give you whatever. But then when it was time to actually sign the deals, there's just always delays. What kind of promises were made to you? Uh, verbal promises, basically. Oh, okay. Verbal promises are as good as the paper they're written on. So uh, verbal promises, and then we follow up with like a physical paper agreement. But that's when communication broke down. This is where I think the dev guys screwed up and led to this whole situation of like, okay, we're just going to take the code private until you pay us for our work. And to be clear, yep. I'm not justifying not paying someone for what they did. I'm just no, no, the thing is like you can sue somebody for a verbal contract, but like what evidence do you have that it occurred? If one person says it happened, the other person says it doesn't happen, it didn't happen. Like your chance of coming out ahead in this situation is not very high. Playing devil's advocate and saying this could have all been avoided by just getting every detail in writing. And I think it's just a good general lesson. But if you're thinking yeah, that that's the million dollar mystery solved, well, no, because this still doesn't make sense. Why not just pay the dev team what you publicly said you kind of already paid them? Why not pay for a game that now isn't launched and now investors are so angry about? Why not pay when you already made millions from minting the eggs on this game? Well, this is where things get even stranger because right when I was ready to pin everything on Logan, and believe me, he is at fault, yeah. I was speaking to the Z developer and I heard a name that I hadn't heard before. I basically um, came in with Eddie and Eddie, Eddie promised me, you know, 5% of the tokens and a million dollars. He never, he never, literally never paid me. 
Wait a second. Who's, Who's Eddie? Eddie? I thought that all of this was Logan Paul. I only put it together when the blockchain center guys also said a similar thing about their deal. They said they were promised 350K and it was Ibanez. They say they had no communications with Logan, but we know they weren't talking about different people. They both dealt with the same guy. So the guy's name, I put it together, must be Eddie Ibanez. Turns out he was managing the developers. What's this random guy doing in Logan Paul's project? And who is he? Who is Eddie Ibanez? Yes, hi, my name's Eddie Ibanez, the lead developer here at CryptoZoo. This reporter says Eddie's entire story is fake. Wait, what? <laughs> Continuously lie, lead people on, hype people up to put more money in. All the, all the while in the background, things are the going puppet down, master in the fan, and you left us holding the bag. Logan, you stole forty million in tokens from me. So you are a scammer. You are a liar, and you betrayed your own community. You aren't that guy. Logan replies, "Oh, trust me, bro. I am that guy." <laughs> No, bro. No, no, man. Trust me. I am. Oh, my fucking God. And that's the end of part one. Wow. I am just so excited to see part two and part three. This is such a cliffhanger. Oh, my God. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, exactly. Holy fuck, man. There's a video. Please give it a like. CoffeeZilla actually does investigative journalism, if you can imagine that. And um, it it, uh, it can be quite entertaining in the crypto world. I just can't believe how many people like put their money into this stuff. It's so crazy to me that it happens. I don't understand it at all. He even admits it, it, yeah, and people still buy his shit, yeah. Like, how do you do that? Can you expose these criminals? The world needs to know how someone could ever describe Logan as trustworthy or honest. Uh, it, it is just fucking nuts, man. I mean, they feel following any influencer, let alone throwing money at them. Yeah, like... In response to Logan's manager, he called him literally every half out loud. Well, I mean, to be fair, also, Logan's manager fucked up. Like, he actually fucked up because if you actually watch what he said, he actually did confirm that the allegations were not true. Let me see if I can find it right here. Verify correct news. Right, that's why I'm calling you. I know, and that's legal. Let me see if I can find it. For that stuff. So I'm just telling you. Legal. Listen, listen to what he says. He Hello? actually did confirm Hey, it. Jeff. He just hey, fucked uh, up. Sorry to bother you. This is Steven with CoffeeZilla. I'm calling because I've heard reports that CryptoZoo hasn't paid yeah, their development team. And I'm just reaching out for comment before I do this story. Um, I got your number from one of the development team. And uh, they just wanted to... I just want to follow up on that. Um, I have no comment for it. Okay. Here you're, we go. Are you guys denying it? Or are you saying it's not true? no comment i don't think that the information is true there it is so yeah he actually did make a comment he said that he didn't think the information was true so there it is yeah he denied it yeah he fucked up like i i feel like yeah he doesn't think it yeah he doesn't think so exactly like this kind of reporting just shows you uh what is and what isn't like your own conclusions like channel five Crypto was a mistake, nothing but a scam. Crypto brought nothing meaningful into the world. Of course it didn't. Like, it, it, it's just fucking monopoly money. Like, I, I look, listen, I bought and sold crypto before, okay? I, I, I have, uh, for different reasons. But at no point whenever I was doing this did I ever think that I was doing anything other than circumventing normal ways to pay people. That's it. You can buy pizza with Bitcoin, though. Oh, yeah, you can. Absolutely. Take your money uh, control away from awful controlling banks. You're, you're taking it away from banks and giving them the, uh, to, to, to bank men freeds. I, I don't think that's really that much better. You ever thought about that? 
Yeah, what do you mean? Taking it, taking the control away from the banks. Well, that just means somebody else is going to be in control instead. Take FDIC any day. Yeah, it, it, no, it's people that they don't understand. Like they're, as I said, this is these people are so naive. They're like, I wish Logan would just come out and say that it was fake. Man, why not Logan just come out and say, can he just be honest with us and just let us know, like, is it fake or not? So we, uh, uh, it's just so we know if it's going to be fake or not. Like, what are you, what the, what the fuck is wrong with you? What was, what was in your head? Like, God damn, bro. Like, I'm going to link this video again. People are so naive. It's sad. Bitcoin hitting 10k soon. Yeah, why would he admit to fraud? Like, what the fuck? And this is like, this is what goes on in their head because they're, they're dumb. Like, that's it. Yeah, it, it it's sad. Let me go back. I'll, I'll read a few more comments. That's it. Wasn't a failure of uh, what's this here? Bitcoin wasn't a failure. Of crypto was a failure of regulation, bro. Uh, look. I, if, if you think this shit is worth money, then invest in it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Put, put your money in, into this. I don't care. And, and there will be people that will make money off of it. Absolutely. Now you probably won't be one of them, but there will be somebody out there that does. Yeah. Put all your money in there. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. I'm just saying that's not what I do. That's all. Do you think government should take a more firm stance against these kind of scams? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, this stuff is obviously wire fraud. You can't put stuff out there and then not deliver the product that you clearly said that you would deliver. Uh, yeah, I think government absolutely, sh there should be more accountability with this. Yeah, I, I feel like it's obviously wire fraud. It's not even a question. Like, they, they made a promise. People put money into it under that promise. They didn't get what they paid money for, and that's it. I mean, like, what do you mean? Yeah, it's not even a question. Government was helping uh, the fraud uh, before FTX went down. Well, I don't know about that. Failure of regulation, bro. What do you think crypto was made? Yeah, crypto was made to avoid regulation in, in itself. Crypto bros shitting their pants. I mean, look, crypto is not an investment. It's not an asset. It's a scam, plain and simple. I mean, I will say this. Uh, crypto is good if you're looking to buy or sell something and you don't want it to be tracked very easily. It's good for laundering money. It's good for buying and selling drugs. It's good for, um, let's see, what else? It's good for sending money in countries that have a very bad economy or countries that are experiencing U.S. sanctions. All of these things are huge advantages that crypto has. Like, yeah, it's good for tax evasion. Yeah, yeah. But in terms of like its actual value, is it actually worth any money? No, it's really not. So everything illegal. Yes, if you're trying to do something illegal, crypto has a high value. Crypto's on the blockchain, it can be tracked. People think it's untrackable, but it's not. Well, I, I don't know the details on that. Like, but I, I mean, it, crypto's for rich scumbags. Not, apparently not rich anymore. Mm. Ethereum has utility, though. What utility does Ethereum have? How how could how could Ethereum have any utility? Smart contracts. It has built-in contracts. So, like, we didn't have contracts before Ethereum? Like, Ethereum has this utility, this, like, brand new amazing utility that there is a contract? Yeah, it's just a buzzword. It's nuts, man. Still doesn't matter. Yeah, who gives a fuck? It, this is the kind of stuff, yeah, people find these, like, little stupid things. Like, anybody cares. A smart contract. Yeah, they can be auto-executed. Let's see here. It's proof you owned it. Uh, tracked forever. Dude, you, you can't force contracts, but in the blockchain you do? Uh, I, I feel like contracts are forced all the time. I mean, 
you, like verbal contracts happen also like how do you enforce a contract i don't know i'd have to really look into this to see if it's anything unique uh, i'm going to assume that it's not but i i have no idea Re libertarians rediscovering 100 year old scams <laughs> that is probably the best definition of crypto and nfts that i've ever heard Libertarians and people without a lot of history knowledge rediscovering hundred-year-old scams. Oh, wait a second. They're just printing more of them? I can't believe that. Yeah, it doesn't understand the meaning of smart contract. Okay, let me look and see if I can, uh, if I, if I can see what this is. Smart contract explained. Okay, here we go. Is there a short video for this? Smart contracts are very popular nowadays, but what are they and what problems do they solve? Okay. The term smart contract was first used by Nick Sabo in 1997, long before Bitcoin was created. He is a computer scientist, law scholar and cryptographer, so I'll spare you his exact words. But in simple terms, he wanted to use a distributed ledger to store contracts. Now, smart contracts are just like contracts in the real world. Okay. The only difference is that they are completely digital. In fact, a smart contract is actually a tiny computer program that is stored inside of a blockchain. Let's take a look at an example to understand how smart contracts work. You probably are familiar with Kickstarter, the large fundraising platform. Product teams can go to Kickstarter, create a project, set a funding goal, and start collecting money from others who believe in the idea. Sure. Kickstarter is essentially a third party that sits in between product teams and supporters. This means that both of them need to trust Kickstarter to handle their money correctly. If the project gets successfully funded, the project team expects Kickstarter to give them their money. Uh -huh. On the other hand, supporters want their money to go to the project if it was funded or to get a refund when it hasn't reached its goals. Both the product team and its supporters have to trust Kickstarter. But with smart contracts, we can build a similar system that doesn't require a third party like Kickstarter. So let's create a smart contract for this. We can program the smart contract so that it holds all the received funds until a certain goal is reached. The supporters of a project can now transfer their money to the smart contract. If the project gets fully funded, the contract automatically passes the money to the creator of the project. And if the project fails to meet these goals, then the money automatically goes back to the supporters. Pretty awesome, right? And okay. because smart contracts are stored inside a blockchain, everything is completely distributed. With this technique, no one is in control of the money. But wait a minute, why should we trust the smart contract? Well, because smart contracts are stored on a blockchain, they inherit some interesting properties. They are immutable and they are distributed. Being immutable means that once a smart contract is created, it can never be changed again. So no one can go behind your back and tamper with the code of your contract. And being distributed means that the output of your contract is validated by everyone on the network. So a single person cannot force the contract to release the funds because other people on the network will spot this attempt and mark it as invalid. Tampering with smart contracts becomes almost impossible. Smart contracts can be applied to many different things, not just on crowdfunding. Banks, for example, could use it to issue loans or to offer automatic payments. Insurance companies could use it to process certain claims. And postal companies could use it for payment on delivery and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. So now you might wonder, where and how can I use smart contracts? Well, right now, there are a handful of blockchains who support smart contracts. But the biggest one is Ethereum. This is what people are talking about. It was specifically created and designed to support smart contracts. Smart contracts can be programmed in a special programming language called Solidity. This language was specifically created for Ethereum and uses a syntax that resembles JavaScript. It's also worth noting that Bitcoin also has support for smart contracts, although it's a lot more limited compared to Ethereum. So now you know what smart contracts are and what problems they solve. 
I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, hit the like button and get subscribed. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Is this something that has to happen on the blockchain or could the... Because the, the thing is, the guy, if the guy came up with this in 1997, it means that this doesn't necessarily have to exist in the blockchain. So, yeah, it, it's a concept, yeah. So I, I don't understand how this makes Ethereum more valuable if this could exist independently anyway. I, I, I don't know. It has to be on a distributed ledger. Yeah, where people can see it. No, I understand. That's why Ethereum sucks. It can't. It's a bit redundant. The blockchain is to verify the contract. I have to see how this works. Because, like, so this is the way Kickstarter works. And, like, how can you actually... I'd have to see, like, what the code for this is and, like, what it really means. It can. It was created back then as an idea. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't. It look up 51% attack. Accounting is automated. There's no human that has to do it. The problem is Spursky making a contract at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean... That, that's what I'm kind of curious about because couldn't somebody just make a contract that was uh, that was fucked up? Like I, I feel like because I, I think that you would have to have two people that had to read it. Yeah, you could just make a fucked contract. People have. Yeah, so this is just... Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, you need to read it. Okay, well then, fuck. That's what Logan did. Okay, yeah. Blockchain is decentralized so I can control or change it so no one can control it. Yeah, I, I think that's good that you can't control it or anything like that. I was just curious to see wh why this made Ethereum useful in, in fundamentally. But it's actually a concept that could be completely separate from Ethereum and Ethereum is just attached to it. So it doesn't necessarily make Ethereum more valuable. It's just that the thing is valuable and Ethereum is connected to it. Okay. Hmm. That's why altcoins are called shit coins. Yeah, sure. Ethereum was created because of WoW. Yeah, I saw that. Anyway, I got to go. I've got to do some real life shit, etc. cetera. Uh, I'll be back on tomorrow. I'll see y'all later. I got to do that. Probably tomorrow I'll do some more WoW. And uh, I might go and do Lost Ark tomorrow since it's the last day of the reset. So until next time, boys, peace.